All right, good evening. Today I'm going to show you how to install the free version of MathCAD, which we will call, which is SMath. And um, they're very similar. I think for this class they're going to have the functionality that we need. And so I'm just going to first go through there. But before we do that, I have another thing I would like to do, and that is complain about our VPN server. Okay. Part of the reason I'm making this video and not a video with MathCAD is because I could not connect to the VPN server. And so instead I'm going to show you how to install SMath and uh, use it to reproduce some of the stuff we did in the first lab. Okay, so now that we're done complaining, we're going to install SMath. Okay, and then three, we're going to uh, redo some examples from lab one. Okay, and then uh, I think that'll be good enough for this uh, video. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to uh, Google and do SMath. Okay, once you do that, you should find a link here. It'll be the first one. <clears throat> and then this is it here. You click on this, download it, and install it. And uh, notice here that you have a couple things. Okay, this is the sources. That's your source code. The wiki is basically a place for you to learn how to use it. <clears throat> All right, so let's see here. That's math description and examples tutorials ah so we got an smath primer 45 pages interactive smath studio worksheet for learning smath studio so let's take a look at this go smath interspace regions calculations okay preparing problems so this looks pretty good hey look at there linear regression we're going to do that in this class okay so here we are. They tell you how to, to find variables. They tell you about the interface. And so this looks like this would be good for you to go through. And I think you can do everything you need to do in this class <clears throat> with this software. Save you a trip to the lab if you're not on campus. All right. So uh, log that away. Make sure that you um, keep that resource in mind. And let's go ahead and start to play with it. Now remember what I said about getting in software, you just kind of have to jump in. And I am no SMath expert, and I'm just going to jump in. Try to do what we did last time. <clears throat> so we did x colon equals 2, we define a variable, you come down and say y colon equals 3, and then we can do x plus y, and then we can hit the equal sign to evaluate. So everything looks like it works just like it did when we had MathCAD. Okay, now I want to define a function and then I want to now notice how I'm inside. I don't know if I can zoom this page in for you. It looks like I can. Down here at the bottom looks like I have a zoom function. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Now notice I'm inside the parentheses and I tried to hit the colon and then it gave me the colon defined inside the function. It's not what I want. <clears throat> I actually want my cursor to be out here. Okay, but in order to do that, I would have to click over or you know go over. The shortcut is to hit spacebar. Okay, spacebar kind of jumps you out. In MathCat and MathCat, I think it's Control Space, but here it's just spacebar. So we hit spacebar, and we're going to define f of x as a line, two x plus say one. Okay, <clears throat> and I want to plot that. So there's some plot tools over here, but this is not actually where we find the plot. The plot, I think, is up here in Insert. We're going to insert a plot, two-dimensional plot. And there we go. I think this down here, I don't know if maybe there's some context help here. I don't know if they do context help. <clears throat> Doesn't look like it. But this is your function, okay? So here... Um, I'm just going to do f of x, okay? And there we go. So we have slope of 2 that passes through 1. 
Now, this is kind of hard for me to see where this is going, so I can come over here to my plot tools. You got rotate and scale. So I'm going to hit the scale button and I'm going to click and drag so I can zoom in. Okay, I want to believe that my equation is actually working. Okay, so look at there. Indeed, we do have a slope of 2, the rise is 2, the run is 1, and we pass through 1 as we would expect. Now, we could uh, also have maybe put an error in there. Okay, so now we have f of x, and it's a it's, click on this red box and it says C not defined. Okay, so that gives us uh, pretty good information. Of course, we could just define a variable C and call it 9, and then that would shift the, the slope up. Okay, because we zoomed in, we can't see it, so we'd have to come here and see where <clears throat> it went to 9. Now, of course, I still have my zoom on, where if I click it and then drag, it uh, zooms in and out. If I want to be able to move it, I can come down over here and then drag the move of the plot. Okay. <clears throat> So there you have it. There's how we can get um, SMath. There's where we have tutorials on how to accomplish uh, some basic programming tasks. And that's how we do some of the things we did in the last lab. The only thing we uh, did in the last lab that we haven't done here yet is create matrices. <clears throat> so if I hit Control M, it does nothing. Okay. Now, if you highlight your cursor over here, you see that matrix that says Control M. So I don't know if they're just, you know, lying to me or what it is, but that doesn't seem to work. All right, so I'm just going to have to click the thing, the uh, palette, <clears throat> and then I get my matrix just like I did before. Of course, we want to define this matrix as a variable so we can use it as an equation. So I just clicked here and I hit X, but I don't really see anything yet. So I'm just going to go on blind faith that there's an X there. I'm going to put a colon. Hey, sure enough, there is an X, and uh, we can define it. Looks like I had to do the colon equals first in order to get it over there. Now we can do like we did before, <clears throat> define, okay, doesn't like tab, okay, the matrix, and it looks like we need to uh, click on each row. So maybe there's a shortcut, we don't have to click on it, but that's what we'll do for now. <clears throat> so we have matrix X, and we can say, well, hey, just like before, I want to take the inverse of this matrix. Of course, everybody in this class knows that you cannot do that. I didn't evaluate it. Okay, so we're gonna, and I'm gonna hit spacebar to try to get to the outside here. Okay, so then I can do <clears throat> equals. Now, we do get a better uh, error uh, message than we got in MathCAD. Okay, this says that the matrix is not, is non-invertible, or and that means the determinant is equal to zero. So let's see if they're telling us the truth. We can go over here to our matrix palette, grab the determinant of X, and then evaluate it, and sure enough, it's zero. Now we said we could change that. We can make this 1.01, or the determinant is close to zero, or really close to zero. And then the inverse, although it exists, it's very sensitive to that division by a very small number here, and so the coefficients blow up. And in <clears throat> in our lecture, we saw how we calculated the inverse, and it involves taking one over the determinant times the cofactor matrix. All right, so I think we've done what we wanted to do. We demonstrated that we could do uh, the same functionality that we had in MathCAD with SMath. So if you don't uh, plan on going to the lab to do all your homeworks, I highly recommend you learn how to use the software. And uh, it may not be as um, bug-free as MathCAD, but I think it'll still be worth your time to learn how to use it and to uh, do the homeworks in there. All right. Have a good one.